So that's paper and ink cards. We're gonna feature the Bird Ballad Suite in paper and ink too. So that's the new paper and ink card class. Um, where's my host code for that? Host code for that dude It's right here. So $50 order before tax and shipping. Use the host code and you'll automatically get kits for these four cards sent to you in the mail as my thank you gift to you. So that's paper and ink cards. We're using the Bird Ballad Suite today. And while you're doing that, I'm going to just do a little bit of coloring with Stampin' Blend. So I've already done the four little flowers for the card. We got a couple peeking out top and a couple peeking out behind the bow. Colored them with Calypso Coral, light and dark. Blended the two shades, really simple coloring. And now I'm gonna hand these over to my oldest daughter who's going to cut them out while I color the birds. So there's, and there's paper snips. Thanks, Desi. All right, I'm going to now stamp my bird image from Bird Ballad, or from the Bird Ballad Suite, Free as a Bird stamp set. I'll go through all the supplies in just a bit, see if we get some more people who join us. And I'll just start coloring first. I'm gonna stamp with Memento Tuxedo Black, non-reactive ink to use with your Stampin' Blends. When I've got a bigger stamp, I do like to bring the ink pad to the stamp. I'll often put the stamp face up on my surface and then bring my ink pad to. That way I can see that this big stamp is covered with ink evenly, even in the center, even on the edges. I cut the very vanilla label from the new, um, I forget what these ones are called. I'll tell you in a minute. We're going to go through the product soon. It's the dies, the label dies that coordinate with the bird ballad. Sweet. Oh, look at what a beautiful image that is. All right. So we've got here for coloring light and dark pool party and the light Bermuda Bay. I've got Calypso Coral combo. I've got the Old Olive combo, light and dark. I've got the Light Mossy Meadow. These will be on the project sheet, so you'll be able to see what colors I used if you just print off the project sheet. And then I have, let's see here, the Crumb Cake combo. Make sure that's not ivory. Sometimes I pick up ivory instead. Um, soft Suede combo and a smoky slate combo. So those are my Stampin' Blends for this project. We're gonna really color. We're gonna blend all kinds of different colors, not just shades. We're gonna do our birds. We'll start with that, and then I'm gonna backtrack and go through all the supplies so you haven't missed anything, and then we'll go through the housekeeping briefly at the end too. I'm gonna start with some simple blend, and I'm gonna sit down for this, so I'll check your comments in a minute. I'm going to start with my leaves. They're very simple. I got my light um, and dark old olive. And I'm going to just kind of scribble in through all the leaves. And I'll do several at a time because we're in such small space. It'll kind of blend itself as long as you don't get too far ahead of yourself. So I'm going to go in with light and then shadow at the base of the leaf with dark. We're in the old olives here, and I'll just scribble where the two come together. So this is simple two shade blending. Did it online, your catalogs have shipped out. You should have them pretty soon if you don't already. And if you're a local kitchen table stamper customer, you're in the Chicago area, then, um, and you don't already have your catalog from one of the few debut events, then come out to Coffee and a Card on Wednesday the 12th at 10 a.m. I'll have some catalogs for you there. Um, and you can get your new 2019-2020 annual catalog if you don't have one already. All right, so I just went through after doing all the old olive and just deepened the shadow and the leaves with Mossy Meadow, the light shade of the Mossy Meadow. All right, then for our branch, we're going to take our soft suede, got light and dark. Sometimes I pick up my bronze, so I like to check them, just make sure. And then I'm gonna color in the branch with the light soft suede. And then we're gonna just shadow where the artist drew in the lines with the darker. So you'll see 
that there are lines across the bottom. I'm doing straight across the bottom of the branch and then all these little lines that the artist drew in. And then it's kind of shadowy where the branch ends. Go up on these little offshoots here. And then I'll just really quickly touch the dark with the light soft suede. Pretty simple. I'm gonna color my flowers on the branches the same way I colored the bigger flowers. Julie says this is her favorite from the new catalog. You love this sweet, huh, Julie? I'm telling you, there is so much to love in this sweet. Okay, so with the flowers, I'm taking the light calypso coral and I'm just scribbling in from the center out and I'm leaving, believe it or not, I'm leaving little white edges. I don't go all the way to the edge. And then I dab in with the calypso coral dark and then blend the two together with the light. Now for the flowers that look like a side view, I'll just dab in a little bit of the dark calypso coral at the base, like right where it meets the stem. And then bring it together with the light, the base of the flower. Really gives you a lot of dimension and it's pretty, um, pretty quick. All right, now for our birds. I've got a couple of different birds and I took the inspiration for the coloring of my birds right from the designer series paper. Just a minute. All right, so let's color these birds kind of using our inspiration. I'm going to start with my lighter and my neutral shades. And let's see here. We don't need Clipso Coral right now. We don't need the soft side, so let's move those aside. All right, so I've got my light and dark, light and dark, and my neutrals. And I'm gonna start with this dude right here. And we're gonna color him with kind of a sweep of the light smoky slate. I'm using my brush. And then I'm going to take my color lifter, my colorless here, and I'm gonna kind of scribble out over his face to get a little light in his eyes. And what'll happen is that it'll push the smoky slate deeper into the cardstock, lightening, lightening the color, the coverage, the shade. And I'm gonna take where the artist drew in the lines, I'm gonna just touch with the darker smoky slate, kinda see the shadow that the artist drew in here. We're gonna follow that up the edge and then under the chin. And then I'm gonna soften those two together. Just the edge where the lighter and the darker meet. Now I'm gonna give the birds some brown in the belly. So I got the crumb cake. I'm gonna just scribble in oh, right over the smoky slate. And I'll take the light crumb cake or the dark crumb cake. And we're gonna follow again the little lines that the artist made and bring the gray and the brown shades together. feel like there's some harshness here. So I'm going back with my light smoky slate, just softening that. And there's my little gray bird. Now let's move to the one here to the left and let's do a little blue and green bird. So I've got my light pool party and I'm gonna start really the same way. I'm just gonna take my lightest shade, kind of scribble in I'm going to take my light crumb cake and scribble in the belly. And I'm going to take my color lifter and bring those two different colors together by just scribbling over them. I'll take my dark pool party and use the artist's lines for reference. And Draw some shadows. Now this bird here overlaps this bird here, so we're gonna bring down kind of a cast shadow in the top of Birdie's head. Then we'll bring the two shades of pool party together with the light. I'm gonna keep the light 
pool party, but put aside the darker one. And I'm gonna grab my light old olive and then just get kind of creative where I'm gonna add some, some green, like it might've come off the wings. And then bring those two different colors together with the light pool party. I'm gonna light where the crumb cake and the pool party come together a little bit more with my color lifter. And now on to our next little dude. Um, we're gonna do this guy here. Got pool party, the light one. We're gonna do his head just down the edge and over the wing. Gonna do the wing and the tail with the light pool party. That crumb cake, we're gonna bring crumb cake, but not all the way to the pool party in this case. And then I've got my light old olive. So we've got three different colors, all the light shades right here. And you want the different colors to touch and blend with each other. So now I'm going to use the light crumb cake, bring the crumb cake and old olive together, and then go down that shadow at the belly and I'm gonna use the light pool party and bring the light pool party and the old olive together. Now I'm gonna keep my light crumb cake here for a minute. I just bumped you guys. Renee says she received her catalog yesterday and already has a wish list. I know, right? It's crazy. I've got my um, light Bermuda Bay here, and I'm going down the edge of the wings and the tail. Got my dark pool party. I'm going to bring the Bermuda Bay and the pool party together. And then a little shadow on Bird's forehead there. And then back to my dark crumb cake. I know we talked about that before I got distracted with comments. I love comments. Keep them coming. Tell me what you know. Those of you who have your new catalog, what do you think? So I just followed the artist's shadow there, used the dark crumb cake, and I'll bring it together with the light. Pretty simple. It's fun to blend all the different colors, and I think that that's how you best capture nature. Um, that's the kind of artist and our you know God and creator is. He isn't afraid to blend blue with brown and see what happens, right? All right, so here's our last little bird. I did his belly crumb cake, and I'm bringing the shadow in with the darker crumb cake. We'll touch where they come together. And then I'm gonna quickly move to the blues and greens again, because I want the blues and the greens to blend with that crumb cake. They won't blend if they're not wet, so you do have to just be bold and move quickly so that the different colors blend together. I've got my light old olive, and I'm gonna take where the light old olive is and scribble over a bit with the crumb cake, the light crumb cake, and scribble over a bit with the light pool party. Now to finish this dude up, we're just gonna take some of our light Bermuda Bay and our darker pool party. And I'm gonna go over the wing and up the back of Birdie's head where there's the shadow lines drawn in by the artist. Soften that edge with the dark pool party. That's our birds. I hope that you learned something about um, blending and using the um, alcohol markers, blending some different colors. I'm gonna go back and touch each of their beaks with a little bit of the light smoky slate. And if there's anything that looks harsh, you can then go back and soften it out. All right, I think I got your comments. So that's that's our coloring. Now let's quickly go back. We're gonna backtrack just a little bit and we're going to talk about the supplies and the products that we're featuring here. So this is the card that we're making. Here's the coloring that we just did. I've got all the Stampin' Blends will be listed on the project sheets know how to recreate 
and let's just show you some amazing new products. Are you ready? So here's our Free as a Bird stamp set. It's a 12 piece cling mount stamp set. I love the fonts in this set. They're clean, they're simple, they're not too foofy. I just love the fonts. The images are gorgeous. And the Free as a Bird stamp set can be bundled with the new stitched nested labels dies. Here's the stitched nested labels dies. We cut that from Very Vanilla. This is our third largest die. When you buy these two products together, you can save 10%. They're in the brand new annual catalog and they're part of the Bird Ballad suite. We're using the Bird Ballad Designer Series paper here. I've got quite a mess of scraps in here. I've used this a lot and I feature it strongly in the paper and ink card class for June because it's just so beautiful. All right, so here's side A, side B. This is the one we're using today. We're gonna use the dots facing the outside and the birds facing the inside of the card. I love this feather pattern right here. I think this could be so whimsical. Bird cages. That's three of our patterns. Let's see if I have the whole collection left. I might not after all of that. All right, then this one. It's got little like bird footprints and look at how beautiful that is. <laughs> Kathy says she loves the dyes. Aren't they so awesome? I love that they're such a general um, set and that you can save 10% on them. It's not just for the bird ballad um, suite. You can use them with anything. This is going to be quickly one of my very favorite papers in the whole annual catalog. You'll probably see me use that a lot. There's a the flip side with the birds. These are great inspiration for how to color your birds. Just follow the examples on the designer series paper. Now there's one that's old olive with keys on it. Here it is. I like this pattern because um, it could be very masculine. So it's got the multicolor floral on one side and then the other side are these old fashioned keys. So this would be very good with Father's Day coming up. These keys are pretty awesome. So that's a Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. Free as a bird stamp set. Stitched nested labels dies. Now, I've got the laser cut cards here. So this is how you'll receive your laser cut cards. Aren't these gorgeous? And they come in the tin. They're very vanilla. Both sides, not like the laser cut designer series paper. That's white on one side. And the envelopes are gorgeous. Look at this very vanilla envelope with the scallop flap. So even your envelope is going to be really upscale. There's the laser cut cards. What else do we have here from the Bird Ballad Suite? I've got the trinkets. We're going to use a little key, but there's a fun leaf charm that can be hang. Uh, there's a fun little bow. I've got the key. The key is a little charm that you can hang and then the flower. So there's four different designs in those trinkets. We're going to use the new lace trim. This one is called um, scalloped lace trim. Isn't that beautiful? It's so delicate. A little extra feminine. All right, what else do I have to show you? I've got my classic label punch, my leaf punch. All my stamping is with the um, Memento Tuxedo Black. I have a little bit, just a tiny bit of linen thread here. I found this one in the bottom of the drawer. So just enough, because I want my key to, to dangle. So I'll just tie a little loop. And then I'll secure with a glue dot under the bow so that the key actually can swing on the project. I've got scraps of pear pizzazz and pool party. I have my lace, my laser cut note card. Let me get that out of the tin. And 
then my designer series paper. This is cut so that I can glue it right in using this edge of the paper. So it is just an eighth of an inch short of a card front. So this piece of designer series paper is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And that'll give you the widest margin all the way around the edge to glue your designer series paper to the lace. Look how beautiful that is without it showing from the outside of the card. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some of these things together and doing um, some punching and stuff, but somebody had asked me, oh, Carol had asked, how's my leg? I will address that while we punch. I'm doing all right, I still have a lot of pain. Uh, my insurance company denied my bone stimulator. I guess um, it's 16 weeks is, uh, acceptable for my insurance company, but it's been almost 16 weeks and I am not fully healed. I should have x-rays next week, but I am really getting around. I'm starting to move more. Um, I got a fitness center membership at my park district and I've been pedaling every day and biking has really helped get my movement back. So I'm feeling pretty good, um, even though it is not healed yet. 16 weeks almost. All right, so I'm taking my multi-purpose liquid glue and I'm gonna drag the tip along the very edge, right at the edge of the lace here. I'm going the tiniest little bead, but I'm also spreading it out with the tip of the applicator. We really want, less is so much more here, you don't want this to ooze out. You'll end up gluing your card shut or end up with goobers outside the card because it'll sink through the lace. So really take your time and spread that fine bead of glue um, with the tip of the, the applicator. And then what I'll do is, in just a couple of strategic places where the lace is a little wide, I'll add just the tiniest bit of, of glue. I like to do it right around the center here where it's kind of wide maybe radiating out a bit from center. And you don't need a lot because when you glue the label to the front, you can further secure this. So easy, less is more. I'm gonna take my designer series paper and move my little key over. And I'm going to watch the orientation of my birds because we're gonna see the backside of this paper. And it, we're going to see the inside of this. So I'm also watching that I have a very slim but equal, very vanilla border all the way around my designer series paper. And I'll burnish the edge down. And because I was careful with my glue placement, nothing's oozing out along the edge. And then I'll burnish those little center spots. And then we're going to check the front and make sure that nothing has oozed out. Nope, no sticky. So very, very conservative when you add your multi-purpose liquid glue. So there's our card. Imagine all the possibilities here with designer series paper or contrasting colors or even trimming out pieces. Like if you trimmed all the way around this little doodad here, you could take out this piece like a doily and use that on another card and then cover over the center here and get so much mileage out of one set of note cards. So don't hesitate to cut out the centers if you're going to cover most of the center and then use that beautiful piece on something else. All right, so let's grab our leaf punch here. We need three of these and I'm not gonna punch the stems. You see me do that a lot. I hide the stems most of the time anyways, so why punch them, right? And you can use less cardstock if you don't punch the stems. And then I'm going to grab my little classic label and we're gonna cut that one out of pool party. I'm trying to decide if I stamped my greeting in Memento or if I stamped it in a color. No, I think it was Memento. That's what we're going with. 
I got my little hello greeting from the Free as a Bird stamp set. I'm just going to ink that dude up with Memento. And we're going to stamp it almost all the way to the right. We really want some room there. Our flowers are going to cover it. Hmm. I think it's uphill. It's uphill. I can't stand and st or I can't sit and stamp. How about you guys? I still do a lot more sitting than I used to, but I cannot sit and stamp a level greeting. Stamparatus. Maybe broken leg stampers need a stamparatus more than I think. <laughs> All right, so there's our hello greeting. Let's grab our little lace trim here, and we're going to tie a bow. Now, I want my lace to be scallop side down all the way around so i'm going to start scallop side down and then i'm going to fold see no twisting no nothing i'm just folding over itself then i'm going to go over the top and then i'm going to tuck in now notice how the scallops now are upside down they're across the top of the bow the scallops are down 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 and then they're across the top of the bow i don't like that so what I'm gonna do is before I pull it tight, I'm gonna twist it. Now my scallops are down on both ears and on both tails. Do you see? And then we can pull it tight and do a little finesse. But because of that little twist, we have a scallop that goes down on every element of the bow. Both loops, both tails. Clear like mud. Does that help you? You got to get tricksy when you're tying with asymmetrical or single faced ribbon. There's always a way. Just got to do a little twist when you're. So there's our bow. All the scallops in the right place. I'm going to trim it away from the roll and, and trim off the excess. It's a pretty generous bow. This is such a romantic card. I've left the tails pretty long. So there's our beautiful little bow. Hey, Veronica. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, it's so good to catch up with you guys on Fridays. I'm so happy to do this as a very consistent part of my schedule. Um, I miss you guys throughout the week. All right, so now... The little bit of linen thread that we have pulled off, I'm going to just thread through my key back to front, and then I'm going to tie a little thread knot here. You don't need a lot of twine, just enough to catch the knot and the tails with a glue dot so that the key can swing free on the card. It's a pretty little detail. I'll let some of the edges stick out from behind the bow. So see, the knot's pretty close to the key. It'll be a good place to hide a glue dot behind the bow. And then we have short tails here that you can see just peek out a little texture behind the ribbon. Okay. Carol Beth says, beautiful card. Hadn't planned on getting these cards, but may have to change my mind. Well, I'll tell you, Carol Beth, they are... Um, so romantic and so, uh, the detail, but they're no work at all. Just glue some designer series paper to the back and you've got, a, you don't need much more. The other thing is to, I don't know if you caught me earlier, but cut them apart. Get in with your scissors. Okay, let me show you here. So here's one. Cause they're not, they're $18 and you get the tin and the cards and the envelopes. But that's not cheap. So what I'm saying too is feel free to get a little creative and trim out this little centerpiece here. And I'm doing it like while I'm looking through the camera. So it's not going to be perfect. But if you just cut this little dude right out here, you'll get the equivalent of two beautiful laser cut pieces for the cost of one. And all I'm doing is snipping that little semicircle and just 
kind of trying to follow the curve. When I get it out completely, I'll trim off any rough, you know, like um, corners. Make sure it all looks really nice and round like a pretty little doily. But you can really stretch the economy of this tin by just being creative with them and don't hesitate to cut them up. All right. I probably should have had my daughter stay because she could have finished this so you could see the two parts and how simple it is with a scalloped circle or um, one of the bigger labels from the free as a bird bundle. You can really just kind of cover where the center's cut out. And then this piece right here is the perfect piece for another card. Let's see if I got something contrasting. Oh, this will work. So then when you put that on another card, look how gorgeous that is. See, so if you hadn't thought about them, um, maybe think again. I think that they were um, a, have a big impact. That's what it is. All right, so now we've just got assembly. It's pretty simple from here. Yeah, you know, I like to kind of audition my leaves before I glue things down. So I'm going to have leaves up from the from the left hand side off the top and off the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some dry adhesive kind of at the top edge and in the bottom left corner. And then I'll take my leaves. And what you have to do here is just kind of audition so that the leaves aren't going to extend past the edge of the card. And if they do just the tiniest bit, because you've got a little room in the envelope, but not a lot. All right, so we've got one there. And we're gonna take another one and pop it off the side over here. And then a third one, and this one's gonna be down off the edge a little bit. So we got our leaves. Now we can go ahead and really add some more adhesive here. And you can be generous with the adhesives here because what that'll help do is secure your designer series paper that's inside. We're gonna go, what is that? Maybe an inch, inch and a quarter from the top of the card and secure down. Now I really burnish here because then the adhesive that's on the label can grab not just the lace, but the designer series paper that's underneath. So simple, we're almost done already. Can you believe it? All right, I'm gonna get some multi-purpose liquid glue. Let's take these flowers. I'm gonna put a bit of multi-purpose liquid glue on the bottom edge of one of these. And just tuck it underneath. Swipe away any glue that oozes out. And then another one. And you'll see that layering one under the label and one over the label will give you such dimension. Think outside the box with your layers. And then we'll take our hello greeting, put a little multi-purpose liquid glue there. What I'm looking for for placement here is not over the leaf, but these little three leaves are going to point right to my hello greeting. And the points on the end of the classic label line up with the edge of the um, stitch nested label. Then where's my dimensionals? Here they are. I've got one of the bigger flowers and one of the smaller. The bigger flower is going to get some dimensionals. It's the only thing on the card that is on with dimensionals. Can you believe that? This is our pop right here. And I'm going to get some little mini glue dots here for my embellishments. We don't want to cover our greeting or our flower there on the branch. Pop that guy in. A little multi-purpose liquid glue here. Nest those two. Snuggle them up. And glue dots. We're almost done. It's a very fancy card, but it goes together pretty, pretty easy. All right, I'm gonna take my mini glue dots and I'm gonna put one on the back of the bow on each side of the knot. So we got two 
little glue dots there. Then I'm going to take those glue dots side up, one little glue dot, and I'm going to put it on the knot here. See how my key still swings free then? And I'm going to pick up and then just tuck the excess glue. And then we'll add the bow. There it is. We've done it. That's our card for today. What do you think of that? All right, so there's our bird ballad. Sweet card. And I think we've featured pretty much everything in the bird ballad suite. Let's take a look here. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Kay says beautiful. Thank you very much, ladies. All right, let me see here. Um, in the new catalog, there is a bundle index at the front of the book. One of the great new features of our newest catalog. I love that. It makes referring to coordinating products and everything so easy. So I'm going to look for that bird ballad. Uh, 91 is the page for that one. Let's see here. So the bird ballad suite is page 91. I'm going to show you another fun feature of the new catalog here. Now that I can share it with you, here's our Bird Ballad Suite page. We've used the Free as a Bird, Stitch Nested Labels, Bird Ballad Designer Series Paper, Bird Ballad Laser Cut Cards and Tins, Scallop Lace, and the Bird Ballad Trinkets on this card. And Stampin' Up! has given you an easy button. If you want the whole suite, you can check the top of the suite page for a single item number that will include the entire suite of products. So fun new feature in the catalog. The suite number, the entire suite number includes the bundle discount. And then if you like just the bundle, you can catch the bundle price on the suite spread. And if you want to look at the individual stamp set, designer series papers, the following page will feature some of the individual products. So Stampin' Up's really given us a lot of options. But there's the Bird Ballad Suite, and here is our project using every item from that suite. Wasn't that cool? All right, so there's Bird Ballad. This is our host code. So if you were to pick up that Bird Ballad suite, then any order of $50 or more at marissaalvarez.stampinup.net, I will send you, if you use the host code, order $50, you'll get kits for each of the paper and ink card class kits. So I'll have the videos for these over the next couple of weeks. The project sheets will be available online. Here's another Bird Ballad project. All right, you guys, if you've got any questions about the new catalog, how to get a new catalog, paper and ink card class for June, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, just email me, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. Look out for the project sheet on the blog. Um, I'm going to take a picture and get at it right now. And um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully you'll start seeing a little more activity from me now that I've got the kids um, settled on summer break, but reach out if you need me, please don't hesitate. Marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. My phone number is everywhere. You can always text me if you need anything. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Stay crafty.